Yes, who are you? What do you want? I'm Julian Olcott. The director is expecting me. Enter, please. Thank you. Be calm. Wolf doesn't bother anyone. I'm Walter the caretaker. I'm pleased to meet you. The studio of the director is in front of that court at the left. Down there in front? At the left. Give me a suitcase. Thank I'll you take it. very much. It's a pleasure for you, too, isn't it, teacher? <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, my goodness. goodness. Oh. Oh. Quickly, please take her to the infirmary and make room so that she can get some air. Look, she can't even look at a new man without fainting dead away. <laughs> I'm sure she's pretending. That one? I'd known that one for a long time, way before she faked this. Mary has a marvelous ability for always being in trouble. <laughs> Love has never killed anyone. She's just found a way to make it pay plenty for her. Beautiful. Uh, I don't think that's the reason she did it. Then what do you think it is? Only a man can make Mary pass out. She's bound to recover in the infirmary, so she can go out tonight. <laughs> You are Julian Alcott, sir? Yes, I am. I am Leonore MacDonald. I'm very glad to know you. The director is expecting you. Thank you. Julian Alcott, correct? Yes, that's right. How do you do? Pleasure. Dr. Benson told me to see you, and here Dr. I am. Dr. Benson is an old friend. He wrote to me. I've been expecting you. Sit down, please. Thank you. There's... There's something I should tell you. Please, sit down, doctor. Yes, Dr. Alcott. I know everything. Benson explained it to me. And he also said you were acting in good faith. That's very kind of you. You know the court of law has found me to be innocent. I know. So here you'll just be Professor Julian Orcutt, and the past shall be of no importance. Thank you. It's very good of you. You don't have to thank me. Thank our mutual friend, Dr. Benson. I hope you'll be comfortable here. Our institute is not a house of punishment. The girls are given a chance here by the generosity of our benefactors. Without this institute, the majority of them would be in some state reformatory. We are trying to give them work and an education and put them back on the right road. No one is ill-treated here, but your job will not be an easy one. Very good. I shall do my best because it's also important to me to find myself. Surely, the past can become a nightmare unless we can free ourselves of it. Uh, sir, while I was coming here, I saw a girl who had just fainted. Oh, that. That's Mary Smith. Don't be concerned because she's just coming off age. <laughs> I hope the future will be better. Yes. But you must remember that here you are not a doctor anymore, but just a professor of science. Of course. I won't forget. If you come alone, I'll show you your quarters. Ah, thank you very much. This way, please, Professor. Sandy.
You hear the wolves? The other day, the farmers had to kill two of them. The people are going mad with fear. If I were Mary, I would be frightened. Look there. Mary! She means trouble, so why bother? It's better to forget her. Let her go if she wants to. Look. She sees Mary, but why doesn't she try to stop her? She's the one who doesn't want to be seen. Funny if she had a lover. A lover? And who could it possibly be? Maybe it's that new professor that just arrived here today. <laughs> if it is, I can understand it. He's pretty good looking. Mm, any man looks good to you. You should never be here at night. Let me go. Don't touch me, pig. You've got your money. Let me go, or tomorrow I'll spill everything. About you and about him. Let me go. Get easy, or you'll be sorry. I want you in one piece. <clears throat> I came here only because of the promise you made. Leave me alone. I came here because I want something. What is it you want now? But I've given you everything. And so who needs it if I have to stay walled in here? Make your promise good to get me out. You wanted a little love on the sly? Then find me a way out of this pig pen. Tomorrow night, do you hear? Tomorrow night. No, Mary. You know very well the court has sentenced you. So only the court can possibly free you, Mary. My body for a middle-aged oversex phonier. Now you expect to get off the hook. No, you don't. Aren't you forgetting, Mary, that you have the letters? The letters. When you give them to me, I'll free you. They're burned. Remember, they're important proof. Very important. So careful. No, wait. Something can be done. Wait. You won't keep me waiting. Or tomorrow you're finished at this school. Mary, wait. Wait. I'll think of something.
Sheena. 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 You really are corrupt, Alfred. No. It's not about her again. Not this time. It's now something horrible, Sheena. I saw. You're a beast, not a man, my dear, so go to the devil. I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything. I'm not with that girl anymore, it's true. She's blackmailing me. The letters. The letters. Yesterday, I wrote a letter to her that can be a disgrace to me. You're not only thoroughly miserable, Alfred, you're without a doubt a pitiful imbecile. But I didn't sign them, never. They can't possibly suspect they're mine. You fool! How far do you think you would go if everyone knew what you really are, Sir Alfred Weitzman? I know it, Sheena. You're right. Miss Schultz, is it all right, please, to go in there? I want to see her. No. No, it's not possible. Take this. Distribute. My report from the coroner. He said the girl was assaulted by wolves and she died as a result of the injuries inflicted. But she could have had a meeting with a man a little before her death. I don't believe it could have been the wolves. Hmm. A girl who wanders out at night into the forest. And Professor, she was alone, mind you. Not to mention the probable rendezvous with someone could very easily have been attacked by wolves. Poor girl. It's a terrible disgrace to be destroyed after years of work. I fear that the good name of our institute will be compromised. We can't be concerned about the institute's good name. In a case like this, sir. Here's Sir Alfred Whiteman. Sir Alfred, something horrible has happened. Sir Alfred, I believe you know this girl. Yes. Yes. I believe I've seen her, of course, at some time. May I leave now, please? What has occurred has upset me very much. Excuse me. Sir Alfred, will you join us, sir, for a minute or so, for I have to complete my report. Purely a formality, of course.
Sir Alfred. Hmm? Sir Alfred, if you want to go soon, we can finish in a few minutes. I can sympathize with you, but I can't avoid the formalities. Of course. Priscilla, what are you doing here? You'll be late to your next study hall. You must go quickly. Why are you waiting? I, I thought I'd forgotten my notebook, Professor. in his office. I have to see him immediately. Why do you have to see him? It's personal. It's none of your business. It would be profitable to get together with me just a little. Give me a chance. I don't bargain with your kind. Well, now I'm finished. We'll soften the news in all of the papers as you asked, sir. You're very generous, Inspector, and I should like to thank you in the name of the Council of the Institute. It's my pleasure, Mr. Sir. Mr. Swift, Alfred. excuse me. Yes? One of the girls would like to speak to you. Make her wait for me. You shall have no reason to worry. I'll increase the supervision over the girls. There's no need to change this Institute into a prison, or we might as well leave the girls in a state reformatory. Please don't worry, Sir Alfred. I know well how far I can go. I do for you? Mr. Swift, I found something of Mary's. What's that? Sit down. Tell me everything. This morning by post, there arrived a letter for Mary. Yes? I opened it. There were only a few words. Mary is blackmailing someone, and in this letter they're threatening her. From whom is this letter? There isn't any name. Mary and blackmail. May I see the letter? No, I left it in the dresser in the dormitory. We shall have to call back the inspector. Tommy, call the inspector and ask him to come over as soon as possible. has no connection with the death of Mary. However, we cannot ignore it. No, no, a blackmailer is not an assassin. They tell me they've legally established that she was torn up by an animal. But we're not very certain you have told us the truth. The letters are here. I only said that someone was blackmailing Mary. Let's see them. Well? Have they just vanished? But they were here. I put them here a few minutes ago. What do you hope to gain with this bad hoax, girl? But let's not waste energy by telling lies and by alarming us. I have fair grounds to arrest you. Excuse me, Director. You must believe me, Mr. Swift. It was here. 
Who could have taken it? Whoever did must have known that I left the letter. Don't be malicious and accuse your companions just because you can't deliver this letter. You are the only one who has seen this letter, and we have to believe your words. And my report doesn't count at all for you. It's not for me. It's the police who need the facts. You better return now. I understand that you're upset about the death of your friend. However, I cannot excuse your conduct. Mary was just assassinated. No one will convince me she was torn up by wolves. These globules, which are red, are presented in the form of minuscule disks that are biconcave. And there are many of them. There are around five million in each millimeter of blood. They are very elastic, possessing the ability of varying their form. Beside elongation, which we discussed earlier... You can't be certain about that. What connection could he possibly have with the letter? Sections of the body which he arrived only a few body. days ago. Possibly he's been living at Brinsville for many months. Here is the charge representing the body and blood. Good. We'll leave this lesson as it is for today and pick it up on Tuesday. Please go now. Done. You want to come in? No, I want to speak to the professor. Okay. Professor, excuse me. What do you want, Priscilla? I want to speak to you a moment. But of course. Something you need to know? Have you seen Mary's body? Yes. Why didn't I and the other girls get a chance to see it before the burial? Maybe it's better that you remember her the way you last saw her. You know the story of the wolves. What do you mean? But those scratches, those wounds, were they made by a wolf? To my knowledge, this has not yet been confirmed. And I don't have any actual reason to doubt it. Why did you come to instruct here? You're not from Brinsville. No, from another town. And I didn't choose it, this place. It was my destiny, not my ambition to accept. Wish something else right now? No, I felt you might know something about the death of Mary, but I see you won't tell me anything. It's the same as another. If this there. one can make it. Pour it. There they are. Thank you. Mary, I need you and you can have anything you want, but I must see you. And please reply very quickly in person. I embrace you, my love. Not even signed. And also this one. Read it, read it. No, no, not yet. No one must ever see this because I know which one murdered Mary. I know the man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's very difficult to understand, but now that you've been with us here for a week, what's your impression? Well, I don't think these girls are any more difficult than others of their age. Perhaps you're right, but these have found the bitterness of life much too early. Yes, I must agree with you, even without knowing them as well as you do. Tell me, that one, for instance, what's she done? Why is she here? She was convicted of attempted homicide. She was living with that poor Mary in town. One night a sailor was trying to beat Mary, almost strangled her. Then Priscilla, defending her friend, almost killed the sailor. Now I understand. That's why the news of Mary's sudden death touched her so deeply. Yes. As the girls are alone here, a friendship like this can sometimes be their only consolation. And where's the hard cash? We'll pay you after. Maybe we'll give you more because he likes you. I? Yes, you. I do believe that money makes a person do anything, don't you? It's tough for a girl to resist a fancy notion of cash when she needs it, hmm? Good dog. 
hug. Stop it. Are you afraid of the wolves? No. Come on, let's go. Watch the house well, wolf. Quickly, we can't afford to be seen by anybody. Come on, we haven't far to go. Peace fighting among themselves, Priscilla. Come on. Is this where it was, Walter? What do you mean? Is this where they found Mary? How would I know? Come on. He's expecting you. Go. Don't be afraid. You're Sheena Whiteman. You expected to find my husband, am I right? Stop it. Take this. This is so you'll have a worthwhile reason for coming here. To me, you're another common slut, just like all the others. And as of now, it's finished between you and my husband. Whiteman. It was your husband. Now it's clear to me. What's clear to you, you little tart? You're all alike. You're all ready to sell yourselves. Yes, but not to be killed. Your husband has killed Mary Smith because she received this. No. My husband is perhaps a philanderer, but he's not an assassin. Then I'll explain all this to the police. I warn you, girl. You'd better not be foolish or I'll be forced to appeal to the dog. That wouldn't help you at all. All the other letters are securely hidden, in case they find me like my friend, attacked by the wolves. Where are the other letters? Do you have them? Those letters will be delivered to the police. I only want to know who's written them. Oh, that's the reason you came here. Yes, that's the reason, even if you don't believe me. 
sit down. I believe you, but also you must listen to me. For a long time I've been watching my husband. He's a strange man. He's a sadist. Everyone else believes he's a respectable person. And he's not even faithful. It's true. It's true the other night he had an appointment with that Mary. I followed him, intending to interrupt them and put an end to it once and for all. They met each other, and when Alfred left her, I know that girl was alive, still living. But suddenly, there occurred something horrible. It wasn't my husband who killed your friend, and it was not the wolves. There was a moon. I saw that the assassin didn't run away immediately. He remained in almost a contortion for some moments on the bridge before going. And it was then that I was able to recognize him. <gasps> Who's there? Where? Over there. There was someone at the window. Oh, it was that caretaker who brought you here. Who do you say is the murderer? I don't want to tell you. Not now, anyway. It's better that you keep your nose out of this filthy mess. The letters and all the rest. Also that poor girl. Her name would be covered with mud. Let her rest in peace. But she was assassinated. Another dirty scandal would be the final ruin of us all, and certainly wouldn't bring back to life your Mary. Do you still love your husband? Yes. To the point of killing? One of his lovers? <gasps> I? Why? What sort of a person do you think I am? The dogs. You didn't say anything to them. If they'd find me killed by them, they'd believe it was the wolves. You are really stupid. I've been foolish to confide in you. Calm down. What are you doing here at this hour? Maybe I should ask you the same thing. But I... I can respond to that. I'm fixing traps to free the forest from the wolves. In a certain sense, we were doing the same thing. What do you have to tell? Oh, nothing. Were you the one that was following me, Professor? No. Absolutely. Why? I don't know. It seemed like someone was following me. Come on, I think I'd better go back with you to the Institute. I'm certainly safer going with you than going alone. Priscilla, I'm sorry, but... I have to make a report. You were told not to come here. Make it. You don't have to worry about me. You're a strange girl. Is that a compliment? Oh, perhaps.
You're too pessimistic. Even if life is hard, it's worthwhile living it. You must believe in something. <laughs> Don't be afraid. It's only a wolf that must have just fallen into one of my traps. You have to go? Yes. Excuse me, it's really necessary. You know, the wolves know how to free themselves and escape with a broken foot. Oh. Don't be worried. I'm almost there already. Professor? Yes? Mm, uh, the report? Don't worry about it. I won't say anything to anybody about it this time. I won't even ask you what you were doing out at this hour. You see, I have faith in you. Thank you. Priscilla. Sheena was all to me, a companion both good and kind. She was attacked by a monster, one of the girls from the Institute, and she was saved by a dog. One of the girls saw this. She said his right arm was torn open by the dog. The police have to inspect each and every man in these... Parts. Absolutely. We're asleep here. We'll have to try and find it ourselves. Certainly. Bronzeville will not lay down. We'll find him. Yes, we'd better act before he strikes the game. We don't want him to get hold of one of our children. The sheriff. Okay, talk. She's still in the infirmary. The dresser wouldn't find anything. You must. You have to find them. If I don't recover those letters, I cannot rest. Look at that man. His right arm isn't functioning. He's the caretaker of the Institute. Sir Alfred. The girl was attacked right in the vicinity of the guardhouse. Certainly it's him. Come on, what are we waiting for? Careful. Don't move. Yes, thank you. 
He mustn't get out of here. He must account for what he has done. Stop it! You're all going mad. Let go of that knife. Walter, nobody is going to do you any harm. Now let him pass through. The man's hand. Look, men. Look at his Look, hand. Men. This man has no scar on his hand. His hand has been like this since he was born. Are we leaving? Step aside. Come on. Come on, go on and sit down. Nothing is happening. Get going, boys. What were you doing with Sir Alfred? Nothing, Dr. Sweat. Why? Return to the Institute. These people could do you great harm. Yes, sir. What's troubling you? Tell me why. You must have faith in me, Priscilla. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know that you can trust me. Finally. They wouldn't even let me in here. They told me I mustn't stay long. Oh, excuse me. I'm not disturbing you. No. I was just telling the professor how very pleased I am to see him. Priscilla. But at this point, it's better to say it all. <laughs> right, Professor? Oh. Sir Alfred, we've been risking our reputation for him. Just what am I to do? This whole story repulses me. In saving him, you saved the reputation of the Institute. Ah. Come in. Sandy, what is it? I must speak to you. It's something terrible. Well, what is it? So speak. I know who the monster is. What's that? Julian Alcott, the professor of science. He's a badly damaged arm. This is not enough proof to even mention. Mary was murdered the night of his arrival. It's him and he's in the infirmary with Priscilla talking to... Don't call Professor Alcott now. And don't tell anyone what you just said to me. But I... Listen, if your suspicions are correct, I shall call the police. Now go ahead. Tommy, call Professor Alcott immediately. tell you too often, but I must have those letters. With pleasure, Sir Alfred. If the letters are still here in the Institute, I'll find them. Good. You wanted to see me, sir? Yes. What, in your opinion, happened in the woods? Well, I believe it has to do with a lycanthropist. In other words, a sort of werewolf. Exactly. Please explain this to me further. What is this? An interrogation? Better to tell me than the police, don't you think? Yes, of course. Well... You know of my career as a doctor. It was terminated by a tragic incident. I was working for Dr. Benson at the mental hospital for the criminally insane. There was a girl. She was accused of homicide. 
but the poor girl could not absolutely recall killing anyone. She seemed perfectly normal. I must add, I was in love with her. Continue, please. In a full moon, she would behave in a very strange way. She would lose complete control of herself and transform absolutely. And her face was like a beast's. Professionally, I wanted to try to help her. And after a certain time, I discovered a temporary antidote. And it's so difficult, actually, without my using the medical terms to explain I've always been interested in medicine, and I think I could follow you. The pituitary gland controls the function of the hormones, influencing the sexual organs and the thyroid. And as a direct reaction, it can cause a psychophysical transformation. My colleagues refuted this theory of mine, and I had proven it unequivocally. For example, at every lunar cycle, the pituitary gland acts strangely and becomes enlarged at the start of the transformation. Our psychocontrols upset the balance of the neuroglandular system, causing incredible distortions in the skin, hair, and teeth. In this state, the patient cannot be saved. I was successful with the extract of the brain of a wolf while I was experimenting on her. One night, she gave herself an overdose. Perhaps I made it too strong. And the police then accused me of killing her. Do you want to know more? In observing the body of Mary, did you feel the crime was committed by lycanthropus? Yes. I'm almost sure about it. I continued my studies in this matter. And this led you to other discoveries. Is it possible to rid yourself completely? I don't know. But that's not of importance anymore. Since I've been here, I've been trying to capture a wolf to extract his glands. They're not rare in our forests. But tell me, Professor, have you ever experimented on yourself? Once. I had to find out what it would be like for a normal human being. It was impossible to observe myself. Would you mind showing me your right arm? No, of course not. Yes, it's hurt. But I did not attack Priscilla. A strange coincidence, don't you think? Before you arrived, there never was any talk about monsters in this town. Then you think that I'm... Professor! The one... You said yourself that a person can be completely out of control during a crisis. How much does he remember afterwards? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Not even one sign remains of it. I assure you that this is what happens. Anyway, I must assure you of one thing. I hurt myself accidentally. Professor, I want to believe every word of it, though it may not appear that way. But I advise you, however, to take great care Perhaps you had better discontinue your experiment. Absolutely not. I can't. The life of a human being may depend on it. And who might this be? I don't know. You asked me to tell you about a lycanthropus. His sickness must have satisfaction. In the next transformation, he'll try again. And you believe that if you manage to find a definite antidote, You'll probably save the life of that person. Then you know who the attacker is. Well, if I should discover an antidote, I'm sure that this person would certainly want to be helped. Sick or not, Professor, he'll be obliged to give himself up. I'm a doctor. It's not fair to treat a lycanthropist like a murderer. If ever I'm successful in finding a cure, these poor victims could possibly begin to lead a normal life, like others. Perhaps you're right, if you think murder won't bother his conscience. If you should ever find out that I am the monster, I should like to be treated the same as you would like to be. I understand you perfectly.
Yes, it seems to. Come on. One of the girls, and he's fled up the tower stairs. Huh? That's impossible. Look there. Where? At the top of the stairs. Stop. Walter, stop, or I'll shoot. Girls, go back to the dormitory. This is nothing for you to see. I said stop, or I'll shoot. Nothing more to do. He was the monster. He tried to kill Sandy. Enough of that. Miss Leonora, get them all inside. Go on, girls. Enough now. Go on inside. Was he the monster? Perhaps the monster never existed. Walter smothered the girl. Now, please, go on, Tommy. I'm going to call the police. All right. Professor? Priscilla? What's happened? Priscilla, it's terrible. Walter killed himself. No. It's true. I caught him by surprise fleeing from the dormitory after he tried to kill one of the girls. Sandy. Sandy? Yes. So Walter was the monster? No. He couldn't be the monster. But why not? Because Walter had a dog. And dogs can't stand the odor of wolves. This is appalling, Sir Alfred. Yes. It's like a compulsion I have here inside of me. And why am I like this? I don't know why. But I've never killed anybody. I've always paid. I've always paid for everything. Those that seem the best sometimes commit the worst. You know you've killed Walter. No. I only ask him to find the letters. I didn't know he'd be foolish enough to risk his life. You must help me. By helping you, Miss Leonore and I were almost involved in this dirty scandal. If Miss Leonore and I had not discovered the letters, you would be in jail. I'm innocent. Oh, if only Sheena was still alive. But why? Because Sheena, that night, when Mary was killed, she followed me. She saw who it was. Don't invent these absurd stories. There's no need for it. I have no intention of denouncing you. I haven't had a moment of peace since Sheena died. It's as if I had killed her with my own hands. If only I had the courage to kill myself. But Sheena knew. She knew. If she knew, why didn't she speak up? I don't know. Maybe she kept silent to blackmail me. She said that with one word, she could send me to the gallows. 
Even the death of your own wife looks strange in the light of this story. Strange? You think that I... I'm not thinking anything. What are you going to do? What will you do? If you destroy me, you destroy yourself as well. Go, Sir Alfred. Why didn't you tell me about Sir Alfred? Because I was afraid. I don't know much about you, Julian. You continue to have secrets. Julian, I know you're a medical doctor. Ah. Well, then. You must also know that I'm a failure. Julian, is one mistake really so bad? Oh, no. But it's a battle, Priscilla. One cannot forget the past when it keeps following you. All right, let's go. There are more important things to be done now. Excuse us, Sir Alfred, but it's very important that we see you. I'm sorry, but I don't have a lot of time to give you. Please. Sir Alfred, I have a, a very delicate question to ask you. Let me assure you, I will tell no one of this visit. But I don't understand, Professor Olcott. I have nothing to hide. You're in bad trouble because of your relations with Mary Smith. How dare you, sir? The letters. Sir Alfred, that is not the point. I want to know exactly what happened that night you met with Mary in the woods. Professor. Are you accusing me? Do you have any proof? I didn't say that. But I wondered if you'd come with me to the police. The police? Yes. I don't doubt your innocence. But there are some facts that have to be cleared up. I don't have to defend myself. You're crazy if you think that you I have... Believe me, don't worry. We don't want a scandal. I know. The facts are all against you right now. But if you have nothing to hide, why are you afraid? All right. Perhaps I was wrong. So we had a relationship, but that's all there was to it. There's no reason to believe that I would murder her. Excuse me, will you, woman, please? I'll go get the letters. And you can see for yourself. Well, 
What about him? It's a possibility. It's necessary to have a second injection. I know. Oh, darling, please, let us finish the cure now. No. Better that you leave me like this. I wish that you hadn't been late that night. I arrived too late. Probably at that moment, Mary was escaping in the woods and might well have seen me come here. Don't have remorse now. You don't know what I've done. Leonore, you're thinking about Trina Whiteman. How did you know that? Sir Alfred told me that Sheena knew who Mary's murderer was. I was so frightened. Sheena and Priscilla saw each other in the forest. 
I saw it through the window. Sheena must have seen you kill Mary that night. You must know I was forced to do it. And she recognized me. Yes. Oh, all the bad I've done. But we must fight back to save you, because without you, I don't exist. Leonore, the second injection. You know I'm not a murderer. Watch out! Leonore! Get away from her! Get away from her! Leonore! I can't help you, Leonore! Get away from her! You built this beast! Get away! Get away from her! Leonore! I can't help you! Get away! Leonore! My darling! The key, Leonor. night in the guardhouse. So what? And now? <laughs> Listen to that story. Tell us, Pris, is it because you're making time with the professor that you're being so very uppity about it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to her, please. Miss Leonor will not be with you this morning. She had to leave for reasons of her own. You may stay in the park this morning, and tomorrow you'll attend the funeral of Walter. <laughs> Silence! You have no right to judge others, much less when they are dead. Judgment is for God alone. of his master might have affected him. A beast sometimes is especially sensitive. It's true. Perhaps he feels guilty of Walter's death. I'm going now.
alone. Wolf, where are you taking me? What have you seen? I've seen a corpse. It's Walter. What are you saying to me? You're imagining things. No, I've seen it. It's not my imagination. The dog led me to it. Wolf. The dog? I followed him and he took me into the woods. At a certain place he began to dig and uncovered something. It was Walter. You're still in shock from that night. Come inside. I'll get you something to drink. All right. I'll go and phone the police. But if we find nothing again this time, come in. But if the body of Walter is buried in the woods, who could be buried in the cemetery? <laughs> Mr. Swift. Mr. Swift, what are you doing? Can't you hear me?
know. I've killed again. You haven't killed Priscilla. I shot you. I had to. It's... It's better this way. Without... Without Leonor, I don't want to live. She... She... She was with me always. She tried her best. Now, I murdered Mary Smith in the woods. I'll excite you out and killed her. I don't remember. I hoped it could be cured. I followed your research. I begged Vincent to send you. Leonor. Leonor is in Walter's grave. Is she? We buried. In the cemetery. May God forgive me. Well, now it's finished. Now the nightmare has passed. 